My name is Kirsten Möller. I'm a pastor. I'm working in the Lutheran Church in the northern part of Germany called the North Albion Church. And uh, there especially I'm the director of the women's department of uh, our church. Um, yes, we do have, uh, let's say, two aspects. One is uh, that we are focusing on feminist theology. And this also for us is a human rights issue because it brings the rights of women into theology. So we're trying to promote uh, the studies on biblical uh, feminist theology, but we also try to bring the outcome of feminist theology into liturgy, into real church life. Mm -hmm. And the second aspect we do have is our social women's involvement in different kind of project. For example, we have a we do like counseling for women who are forced into prostitution in our mm -hmm. church. Uh, mainly the women come from uh, Eastern Europe who come to Germany and uh, are forced into prostitution. Some coming from Africa, also or Asia. And mainly it's like uh, they promised a s sort of better life um, in Germany. They promised that uh, they would have earn money that they could send back home to, to give a good education to their children, that they just can leave the kind of very awkward life some of them live in their home countries. And sometimes it's even like relatives who promise this kind of things and mm. it is only when they come to Germany that are uh, they find out that they are sold into some ho household into prostitution. And it's very difficult for them to get out of that again because they feel quite ashamed. There's a lot of pressure on them from uh, the dealers. Uh, they can't go back home because uh, they can't tell their, their parents that they have prostituted themselves. So we have two social workers who are talking to these women and try to find out what are their needs. They're trying not to dominate them again as they are dominated very much in this prostitution situation, but they're trying to work with them. What can maybe help them in their special situation. So they get legal advice, they get financial help, uh, they also might get help to trying to build up another life, uh, even in Germany. Because of the European Union, a lot of them are not illegally there. Mm -hmm. They are allowed to be there, but they would have to have another kind of work at the moment. So all this kind of help we try to give them. It's very, very difficult because women are quite traumatized once they get out of the situation, meaning they, they stay into the situation for quite a long time and they are already mentally and physically ill when they come to our offices quite often, so it, uh, they need to build up a lot of trust mm. to start to talk and then to, to um, yeah, look for a kind of perspective and our social workers try to help them with that. My face is, is very important for me. It, it mine's the basis of all I do. I think that uh, uh, for my understanding, biblical understanding, the issue of justice is uh, one of the central issues. And uh, uh, we are called to be uh, liberated people, but not liberate for ourselves, but to strive for justice. So mm -hmm. that is the essence of what I understand from the Bible. We have a big, huge church day in Germany, and that was very influential to me. I, I, the first time I heard from the church day, I was ill in hospital, and then I decided, next time there's a church day, I'll go there. And that was like starting to bring me back into church. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I think a very important thing for me was I was sent by my church to work a year with the South African Council of Churches in, uh, in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the uh, land rights of people, so that, uh, who people who were forced into uh, uh, into removal, and we tried to support those people. And I think that really influenced uh, my church work and work for human rights. And then, of course, I mean, a person like uh, Nelson Mandela is yeah. someone. Uh, once you have met uh, him, you will never forget him. He is such a humble kind of person striving for reconciliation and it's quite, it's so impressive to know that he's been into detention for 27 years and 
yet coming out and uh, like being signed such a humble and uh, reconciling person. That is, I think, very encouraging for, for me to, especially if I'm very, sometimes I'm very impatient and then if I think about him, it, uh, it gives me patience back. Um, I think what uh, influenced me very much was when I was still a young person, uh, we, uh, we had some refugees that we were hiding in our church building. Mm -hmm. We have a thing called Pastorate, mm -hmm. and we had an extra room there so we could uh, keep them there. Mm -hmm. uh, they were, I can't remember, they were coming from some state from the east, I, can, mm -hmm. I can't remember. So we had a language problem, at first we only had to, to show each other with fingers what was on, and uh, for them it was also at some stage after like something like eight weeks it started to be very difficult because they were also very uh, started to be very depressive and it was quite hard for us to uh, to help them not being able to communicate with them mm. in their language mm. but still we found a way to to help them and strengthen them and we were very lucky because we had one lawyer in our small town then who was specialized on asylum problems so, and he also helped us to fight this case through with the uh, local government mm. there uh, and they were staying there for like I think it was almost 12 weeks and uh, we they came very close to us but it was also a very difficult time for them because they had to hide uh, but at the end uh, they would be they were able to stay in Germany so they got asylum finally mm. and uh, that uh, really showed me that uh, with a little thing you it, it, it wasn't much that we could do we just offered them a room and brought them something to eat and some visitors and sometimes took them out if we thought it was safe but uh, for them it changed life mm. so yeah, it was a good experience having them with us For me, it's very important to uh, to have this kind of coming together consensus and agree on s on common rights. And uh, in this sense, I, I see it as a document also one needs to work on uh, mm. continuously. Mm. I mean, uh, it was written in a certain time and, and it is documenting this kind of time. And there might be other needs now that are not included, like we were talking about uh, the need of water. Mm. Mm. And also, I think the inter uh, interreligious kind of discussion between Christian and, and Muslim faith, it, it has to make us think whether we are only looking at it from a Western perspective. But I think having documents like that is so important so that you agree on one thing and you can say, hey, look, this is human rights, you, you have to, to, to stick to that. I think um, it's it's as I said at the beginning. It's 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 for me. It's their basic task. I mean, uh, human rights for me has to do something about uh, justice, uh, looking at at the needs of others, of yourselves, and uh, so for me, the like striving for justice is uh, one phase of it is trying to fight for human rights. It's church work.